I quit DJing. <laughs> Yo, what is up you guys? This is DJ Anthony Alvarez. Come on, I know you weren't gonna fall for that clickbait. Um, so, the reason why I'm making this video is kinda explain where I'm at with DJing. Now, I, uh, I'm gonna go through how I started DJing, where it brought me, where I wanted to go, and kind of all around uh, giving you an idea of who I am as a DJ and what my career path has gone to as a DJ. It's not something that I became successful about it overnight. So what happened was I was really into music. Uh, for those of you that know me since I was a little baby, I've always been into music, always enjoyed listening to my dad's records, always enjoyed playing his cassettes, uh, even his big book of CD collections I like going through. With that, my passion turned into I always wanted instruments, so my dad uh, got me a guitar. And I'll, forget, I'll never forget the Christmas that I got the guitar. And they wrapped it up, put it under the tree, and I remember just bawling my eyes out, so pumped that I got a guitar and was ready. I didn't know what I was doing. I would just strum away, I had no clue. Did guitar lessons, learned it. Uh, so I've been a musician kind of like my whole life. Played guitar, learned how to play. Played with a few bands here and there, here in school. So after years of playing guitar, I kind of decided that uh, it's awesome, I love it. But I didn't want to make a career out of it because I knew that there was, you know, there's times where I'm very stressed out. I don't know how to say it, but once I start playing guitar, it just makes me feel so much better. So I didn't want that to turn into a career. It's kind of hard to explain because it was something that I was passionate about, but not something that I wanted to worry about making money off of it. I still play guitar here and there. Now, DJing started when I first heard the song One by Swedish House Mafia. I'll play a little bit clip right now. And that song is what really, you know, I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And I saw the video to it and saw like how they're producing music electronically. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And that just kind of opened up uh, the floodgates for electronic music for me. I've he heard techno songs before and stuff like that, but really got soaked into that Swedish House Mafia one track, started listening to a bunch of other stuff. As I'm exploring music uh, in the electronic genre, I'm like, oh man, this is so awesome. I love it. I love that four on the floor beat. Really, really cool stuff. I, I really enjoyed it. After that, I was working at Best Buy at the time, and then I was also going to school for mechanical engineering. At the time when I worked at Best Buy, I noticed that we sold DJ equipment. I said to myself, great, working at Best Buy, I got an awesome discount on DJ equipment, and my first piece of DJ equipment was the tractor. Uh, it was like the Newmark tractor DJ to go or something like that. I don't think it's DJ to go. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it was very bare minimal kind of control system and you had to use a separate sound card for a DJ IO tractor sound card. So when I got that, I got into DJing, I started playing music, started playing around with beats and got hooked to it, it, it instantly. I, I really enjoyed and at the time I knew how to be on beat but I didn't know when and where to mix music. So fast forward probably like a year, I've had a few bar gigs under my belt, but honestly still didn't know what I was doing. Played at a bar in Malden, uh, the Ale House, if you guys remember that. Not the most, not the biggest bar, and it wasn't the most exciting bar to play at. But number nine, Ale House, was uh, the, the bar that I started at. And then my brother-in-law says, hey, you know, my friend has a DJ company, he works with the DJ company, and he's looking for a DJ. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, like, what do I have to do? And he's like, I'll, you know, I'll get you guys in touch. So I'm still at Best Buy, I'm still in school at this time. I decide to check it out. So my brother-in-law gave me the, uh, the information to my great friend, DJ mentor, uh, Mark Dixon. And you guys have seen all the all the events that I do are pretty much with him. He honestly took me under his wing and taught me how to DJ. So first event, I went to just look at what they do. It was a college party at Babson College. And I remember they had like all these like dancers and they had this crazy uh, DJ booth set up. I think it was called God's DJ booth. It was like all this trussing wrapped around and it was really cool. So I'm like, oh, this is sweet. So he invited me over to the office to kind of show him what I can do. <laughs> right off the bat, no, I was it wasn't horrible, it wasn't horrendous, but I've never learned how to mix properly. So I knew how to get on beat, 
but I didn't know at what beat to come in on. So that was a struggle for me. Not a struggle, I, I adapted and learned quickly after he explained to me. With that being said, I started DJing with them. My first event, I remember like showing up and I thought I was just gonna plug in my laptop and play. And they're like, no, you gotta bring this equipment in, bring this stuff here, this, that, whatever. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta set up all this, event. like whatever. So I was a little bummed out about it, but it was fine, whatever, it, it was an experience. Eight years later, I'm still DJing with them, uh, still DJing with Mark Dixon. We do a lot of, so if you can see my gig logs, a lot of them are bar mitzvahs. We get busy during the winter time with bar mitzvahs. And then during summertime, we pick up more on weddings. And you know, I, I've been doing a little bit uh, back and forth, kind of like some of my own stuff that my friends have hired me to do, and then some with PR Energy Entertainment. Really cool, uh, learned a lot through the years and realized that it's not all about, uh, I mean, it is about mixing, um, but a lot of it is programming and trying to pick the right song at the right time to play. So I learned a lot of how to DJ mobile gigs, a lot of weddings, bar mitzvahs, corporate events, stuff like that, and I really learned a lot. So now, not that I wanna quit DJing, I just kind of hit a stale point in my career. I want to shy away from doing kids parties and focus more on doing weddings and maybe some bar and club gigs. Focus more doing weddings because it's more of like an adult celebration. I wanna focus more on like clubs and bars because there's so much you can do with music in that setting. I've done some weddings where I was able to bring the club vibe to and it's really cool. But a lot of times like weddings, bar mitzvahs, stuff like that, you really gotta stick with the original songs and like, you know, you can't really uh, mess around with sound too much. So, um, which is fine. I honestly, I don't mind it. And it's like, I really can't be complaining too much because I'm playing music for people. I'm having a good time. I just think that I've been doing it so long not so long because there's guys out there that have been doing it for 20 plus years 30 plus years but i just feel like maybe i need to shy away from the kids events and focus more on maybe adult celebrations i'm not, I'm not too sure that's just kind of where i'm at right now so i don't want to quit because i love what i do i really do uh, and I'm sure every DJ has hit this point. If you're a DJ out there and you've gone to that kind of lull in your career and what you want to do, let me know. Let me know how you overcome it and what you do. Just, I mean, right now I'm just kind of going with emotions and uh, have fun with it, I guess. The past three, four events I've done have been absolutely phenomenal. Really crushed, like, was really amazing. Uh, probably the best I've had year round. Now it's 2018, we're going into 2019. I'm gonna be 30 years old and trying to figure out where I want to be as a DJ. For the past 10 years or so, I felt like I've been DJing under the shadows of other people. And not just people, but like, I feel like I'm not being my own person when it comes to the DJing thing. Kind of struggle with understanding kind of where my position is as a DJ. What do I want to do as a DJ? So I think just maybe breaking out of that habit uh, might be beneficial. I'm trying to figure that part out of things and uh, very excited to move forward. 2019 is going to be an awesome year. I have a good amount of bookings that I've done and really looking forward to change. Uh, I saw a video of a rabbi and he you know, told a story about how a lobster grows and I was like, wow, you know, the lobster grows, its shell confines it, once it gets to the part where it's uncomfortable, the lobster casts the shell off, builds a new one. That's that's an amazing analogy. You get through times where we feel uncomfortable, that we need change, and it's a beautiful thing. I think everybody should go through that, and then you really find out what your talents are. My moment with the DJing thing that was when I quit the bank to do the DJ thing full time. Now, I used to work at a bank, I was full time, had benefits, got great pay, commission was awesome, but I just wasn't happy doing what I was doing. I was absolutely miserable. Again, was making great money, was able to live, whatever, but again, just wasn't happy with what I was doing. So I knew that I needed to come time to change. I got invited to go to the DJ Expo with Mark Dixon and PRNG crew. I met some amazing, amazing talent uh, over at Atlantic City where they really just watching what they did i'm like wow this is awesome like why can't i do this as a living so watching all those guys on stage i'm like this is what i want to do this is what i gotta do and i gotta figure it out how i'm gonna do it so working with prng has been a blessing because they've really taught me so much where i just kept getting better and better and eventually they kept booking me where i was working every weekend so that's you know not a lot of djs can say they could live off what they you know off djing so now it's 2000, you know, we're going into 2019 
and really I think this month is gonna be kind of a, a self-reflecting month in where I gotta decide what I'm gonna do. And there was an, an, a quote that I think it was Tony Robinson says that, stop thinking about what could go wrong and start thinking about what could go right. And I'm like, damn. I was like, damn, these freaking motivational speakers got me again. And, and it's true. It's so easy for us to think about what can go wrong instead of what can go right. I don't know what it is, I don't know why it is that negativity is so easy to spread and soak in uh, where positivity takes a lot of reinforcement to do so that's it like I said I, I'm not I'm not really quitting DJ um, I'm gonna wrap this up uh, and then hopefully I hope you DJs out there if, if there's a bunch of DJs watching um, I, I would I'd like to get your input on how you feel if you guys have been through this like I said I've been DJing for the past like 10 years or so probably eight years nine years professionally uh, where I actually get paid for it so uh, like I said, if you DJs have any input or anything, uh, let me know. Feel free to hit me up with the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for watching my rant, and I will catch you guys later.